Welcome to the Binger. So, how do you feel about having your childhood ruined? What's that? You love it? <laughs> well, that's great because that's exactly what we're about to do for you. Toy Story is the brand that defines Pixar. An innocent look into childhood imagination. Now, sure, there are adult jokes and the occasional heavy theme, but it's mostly fun and games. Until it isn't. The more you think about Toy Story, the more messed up the concept is. Imagine being alive, but having to constantly hide that existence from giant beings that can literally make or break you. What sort of things have these toys seen? Have they snuck out of Andy's room and seen things that they probably shouldn't have? Are they immortal, cursed to live on whether they're in a happy home or a garbage dump? Toy Story 4 is on the way and might answer some of these questions, but given what we've seen so far, we might be better off not knowing. What's up with the spork? There's a few new characters on the scene in Toy Story 4. We've got Jordan Peele and Keegan-Michael Key lending their voices and comedic stylings to a ducky and a bunny. We also have a new toy voiced by Keanu Reeves called Duke Kaboom. But the toy that's making the biggest waves is Forky. He appears to be a spork that was given googly eyes and pipe cleaners that act as limbs. It's the sort of arts and crafts toy many kids make when they're little. However, it seems that such an existence defies nature itself. Now, spoilers ahead, in case you're one of those people who thinks that anything in a trailer is a spoiler. Don't say we didn't warn you, though. The trailer for Toy Story 4 makes it clear that the story is about Forky. Mostly. Woody's going through his own thing, but we'll get to that later. Forky plays a big role by answering an important Toy Story question. What makes the toys live? The plot of Toy Story 4 seems to say that the child's imagination brings the toys to life. Once Bonnie creates Forky by putting human features on him, he is now a toy in her mind. And that also gives him sentience. Understandably, this freaks Forky out. He questions his very existence. He says that he's meant for soup and salad, not playtime. He even runs away because he cannot take the sudden life that's been forced onto him. That's some pretty dark stuff for a family movie. Many people theorize that Andy's imagination brought the toys to life, but we never considered the possibility that the toys would reject that life. Where does that leave Forky exactly? Can he ever return to the simple spork life? Probably not. The release plot synopsis suggests that Woody will help Forky accept his role as a toy. Which is great for Forky, but what about the toys that don't accept their fate? Or the ones who are created and then abandoned? Is toy life forever? It seems like it is. The toys have no trouble leaving their children to go on adventures. They do always want to get back to their children, but their desire comes from duty. The toys never say that they need to be close to their children to stay alive. We actually see evidence of this eternal existence in earlier movies. The Woody's Roundup gang that Al almost sells seems perfectly content to sit in glass cases. Toy Story 4 will show Bo Peep leading a colony of lost toys, so it seems toys will live forever as long as they avoid physical harm. Again, think about Forky waking up to learn this. Is eternal toy life really a great thing? Woody, Buzz, and the rest of Andy's crew never seem to give it much thought. They'd gladly live forever as long as they had children to entertain. Forky represents a perspective that we haven't seen before. Eternal life as a toy is terrifying. It's forced. Suddenly you exist, and you have to make a child happy. If you don't, you could be trapped in a box forever, or a garbage dump. Even if the kid does love you now, they'll grow up one day and abandon you anyway. Toys have no choice but to live and live forever. That's the reality poor Forky has been brought into. He would have been better off living as a bug in the Cars universe. Kids are monsters. Let's think about the other side of the coin. The fact that children bring toys to life with imagination. They create sentience, bring life to an entire species. Are children equipped for that kind of responsibility? No. No, they are not. And yet they not only have this power, but use it without realizing it. That must lead to a lot of situations like Forky's. Toys suddenly brought to life with no way of coping with their newfound existence. It's not just arts and crafts sporks either. A theory video from Wicked Binge brings up a disturbing thought. What if the imagination powers of children extend beyond toys? What if they can bring anything to life? After all, 
playtime is often a place where experimentation is encouraged, where there are no limits. The biggest modern example of this is video games, entire worlds that play out inside a machine, often engineered to fuel a child's imagination. Can children playing video games use their imagination to bring the game's characters to life? That concept comes very close to a beloved Disney film, Wreck-It Ralph. There we see what it would be like if game characters were alive, and it's not the greatest. In the second movie, Ralph almost takes down the entire internet because he's having personal problems. Vanellope also throws the whole balance of Slaughter Race out of whack by adding herself as a new character. The players were probably very angry about a sudden arrival of an overpowered NPC. Ralph, Vanellope, and the other game characters don't seem to follow the same strict rules as the Toy Story toys do. While Woody and the gang make it a point to hide their secret from the world, Ralph is out there making viral videos. If children's imaginations can give life to game characters, they really created some monsters in Ralph and Vanellope. Even if Ralph and Vanellope are more unique cases, it still means that every 12-year-old's Fortnite character could be alive. That's more terrifying than any theory we could come up with. Another movie that tackles this concept is The Brave Little Toaster. We probably don't need to explain the dark scenarios that story tells about living appliances. All we'll say is that, like the Toy Story toys, the appliances in Brave Little Toaster stake their very worth on if their master needs them. When it seems like he doesn't, they resign themselves to their inevitable destruction. The point of all of this is to say that kids really shouldn't be bringing random objects to life. And yet in Toy Story 4's world, that's exactly what they do. They give life to sporks and possibly other objects, cursing them with an immortal existence. The worst part is, they're completely unaware that they're doing it. Do you think Andy would have given his toys away if he knew they were alive? He probably would have kept them so his own kids could play with them. He would have wanted Buzz and Woody to stay in the family. But because the toys hide, Andy had no idea. Sid is probably the only person in the world who knows toys can talk. Every day in the Toy Story world, kids are creating new life. And every day, one of these lives is lost, destroyed, or sealed away. Kids might be the biggest villains in Toy Story history because they're too innocent to comprehend what they're doing. Bo Peep goes bad. Stepping away from all the existential stuff, we have to talk about the actual plot. What dark twists can we expect in Toy Story 4? Looking at the trailer, we see a lot of familiar scenes. Maybe not actual locations, but story moments. There's Woody getting separated from the gang. There's a secret gathering of new toys. And there's an offer for Woody to leave his kid. That sounds like pretty much every other Toy Story. If the formula really proves to be the same for Toy Story 4, that could mean a dark turn for a familiar face. Bo Peep returns in Toy Story 4 more hardened than she ever was before. She was always more aggressive than her dainty appearance suggested, but now she looks like a rebel leader. She ditched the dress for a more action-y outfit and seems to lead a colony of lost toys. That's when things start to look troubling. Toy Story 2 and 3 features some sort of leader figure that welcomes Woody with open arms. They offer what looks like a toy utopia only to end up having selfish motives. Then when Andy's toys try to escape, they use force to make him stay. That formula seems to be repeating itself in Toy Story 4's trailer. When Woody gets lost with Forky, he finds Bo Peep and her lost toys. She even says, who needs a kid's room when you can have all of this? That sounds a lot like she's tempting Woody to leave Bonnie to stay with her. The location she seems to be referring to, a carnival, even serves a familiar function to previous havens. Al wanted to sell the toys to a museum, where Stinky Pete promised Woody that he'd make children smile forever. Lotso made the daycare seem perfect by saying that kids would come and play every day. Bo Peep could sell the carnival in the same way. She would tell Woody that it travels and makes people happy year-round, making it seem like the answer to his problems. Of course, Woody will probably say no. He might waver, but he'll remember his duty to Bonnie. So what happens then? Will Bo Peep just let him go? No, because the movie needs conflict. So if Bo Peep follows the pattern of previous movies, she might do something nefarious, something to keep Woody no matter the cost. The difference will be that this time, instead of a new character, it'll be an old friend. It would be heartbreaking to see Bo Peep go bad, especially if it's Woody she betrays. All that being said, nothing is certain. Toy Story 4 could have a different twist entirely. Maybe there is no villain, but if there is, our money is on Bo Peep. 
This is the end. Our most depressing theory is that Toy Story 4 is the final movie in the series, and that the end will be sadder than Avengers Endgame or Game of Thrones. Both Tom Hanks and Tim Allen, the voices of Woody and Buzz, had some emotional reactions to the final scene. In an interview, Hanks said that the ending was a moment in history. Likewise, Allen said that he couldn't even get through the last scene. So what will happen in the end that's so emotional and history making? To use those words, it has to be something big. And the only thing that big would be the end of a character. Maybe Woody actually retires with Bo Peep, with him and Buzz going their separate ways. Maybe someone is lost forever. Maybe Forky goes into a confused rage and rips everyone apart. Whatever the case, something is going to come to an end. These characters have been on quite the journey, and keeping them around for another two or three movies just for money? It's not Pixar's thing. It seems like it's time to say goodbye to Woody and Buzz, whether we like it or not. Toy Story 4 promises to challenge everything we know about the world of Buzz and Woody. It'll show how a toy is born, and why that existence is really screwed up. It could be the darkest kids movie of the year, if not Pixar's entire history. Do you have a theory of how the toys come to life? Let us know in the comments down below, and get ready to cry when the film comes out. Also, be sure to subscribe to The Binger for more dark looks at your favorite childhood films.